ChatGPT4 has just been defeated. Introducing Gemini. This is Google's largest and most capable AI model. And this thing is next level. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the details. So the first thing is they have separated this into three different versions. The first one is Gemini Ultra. That is their largest and most capable model for highly complex tasks. And then they have Gemini Pro. That is their model for scaling across a wide range of tasks. And then there's Gemini Nano, which we all know Nano is their most efficient model for on-device tasks, aka that is their smaller one. Now, again, this is still recently released and the more upgraded versions are going to be out for the public in the next few months. But the comparison with GPT-4 is outstanding to see how much better this model is compared to OpenAI's super famous GPT-4 model. Now let's go ahead and see some stats on how much better this actually is. So here are the numbers. First off, we are using the Ultra Gemini comparison which is their best model compared to GBT4. So now first off, we have the benchmark and essentially higher is better. We have the general capabilities. Now the description they have here, it is representation of questions in 57 subjects. So STEM, humanities, etc. 90%. And then we compare that to GBT4 at 86.4%. Next thing we have is reasoning. Then we can see the comparisons there and as far as the percentage, it's only slightly more at 0.05 higher. And then we can see here at the other comparison with drop and then the last one, we can see that actually GPT-4 surpasses it using that comparison for that benchmark at 95.3%, which we can see right here, but it is slightly higher for the drop benchmark right there. Continuing on, we have math. It is two plus more percent higher we're using this benchmark, GSMAK, and then we can see it is slightly higher at 53.2 with this benchmark of math here. In addition, we have code. Now, this is actually much higher percent increase compared to the other ones with a 74.4%, and then we have the 74.9%. Now, seeing how complicated and complex these models are, even the smallest percentage as of right now might not seem like a big difference. And for most users, you might not even notice the actual benefit of having a maybe 2%, 3%, even 1% increase in, for example, reasoning or coding. However, this is only the beginning. We haven't even reached 2024 yet. Maybe you're watching this in the future and they are going to continuously upgrade and you can see the speed at how much GPT OpenAI has progressed in just the past two years, let alone now we have Google in the space competing side by side. This is about to get crazy. Now let's look at some more details regarding Gemini. So here are some more stats. These are for the multimodal. And we can see here in the blue highlighting Gemini and then this comparison to GPT for V and essentially percentage up by quite a bit on pretty much every single option we can see here. And for this particular one, it is more than 5%. And for the others, it seems it varies anywhere from maybe one to four plus percent, give or take. But then we can see here for audio, it is significantly, look at this, more than a 10% jump with this benchmark right here. And then we have right here, it is actually lower compared version of Whisper V3. So it seems that GPT in general is not better and almost majority of this there's like one or two that it has the upper hand comparing on certain measures but as of these current stats seems like Gemini is currently in front now here is a video that is pretty amazing to see and this is on the Google blog if you can watch it they have multiple videos as well and I'm just gonna quickly go through this and essentially the summary is here it mentions about research and data and large amounts of data and particularly for this example they utilize Gemini to go through and essentially read the data updates and it went through over 200,000 according to the video and is utilizing it right here as you can see and basically it picked out I believe 250 
options from there and then basically upgraded and updated all the information to the current dates utilizing AI. So in short, what this can mean is for even scientific purposes or even just in general, things that have an absurd amount of information, AI can quickly go in through, do what you need to do, filter, sort it, and you can see here it updates the figure in real time. And that is just one of the things you can do with AI that is going to change the future of the world. Now here's where things get interesting. Gemini Pro is apparently being utilized in Google Bard, stating here today, which would be essentially a few hours already past, Bard will use a fine-tuned version of Gemini Pro for more advanced reasoning, planning and understanding, and more. And that is the biggest upgrade to Bard since it launched. And it states it will be available in English in more than 170 countries and territories. And they're also bringing it to the Pixel, aka the Pixel 8 Pro, which is one of their newer smartphones they've generated. And that is going to be interesting to see how the actual cell phone industry moves as well. Comparing this with Apple and Google phones, Apple at the point right now isn't connected with any sort of particular AI business in terms of the GPT model. But Gemini, Google, Pixel all combine into one company. They can go in there and just pretty much stick it onto the next phone. Next thing you know it, if it is advanced as they say this is and is going to continuously upgrade, it might be a attractive feature to buy a Google Pixel phone compared to a non-AI infused phone. Again, that's just my thoughts, but we're actually gonna go into Google Bard and test in some of the features and compare that with the current version of GPT-4 to see if there's any major changes. And again, note this is stating Gemini Pro. So as of right now, Ultra is not available at least to the public, but we'll go ahead and see how that goes for now. And here's some more details regarding the actual Bard and Gemini upgrades. And essentially, you can try it out. And they state here, Gemini Pro outperformed GPT 3.5 in quite a few tasks we can see here. And then they have famous YouTuber utilizing Gemini Pro with a experiments. And here's their mentioning of Gemini Ultra. And then here they have Gemini Ultra, which is an advanced version of Bard. They state here early of next year. So I can't wait to see this Ultra being released because compared to the GPT-4 version, Ultra was the number that they measured everything with and that is essentially is the one that is better. Gemini Pro at this point, I don't see any stats measuring that compared to GPT-4, but at least right now it seems that it might not even be at that point of GPT-4 levels, but apparently it is up there at least with GPT-3.5 as of the stating on this post. So here we are on Google Bard. Now, let's go ahead and see what is new with Google Bard. And let's see again if it's capable of giving us the information that we saw here. And let's see, improve understanding, connecting with some apps, yada yada, we can see here. And now let's go ahead and try something. So first thing is, let's go ahead and see if we can do something that GPT-4 can do, which is generate images inside. So let's say generate an image of a dog. Now, we'll see if Google Bar can just do the basics compared to GPT-4. And if it can, then it seems like they're still learning to create images. So as of today, Google Bar does not look like it is at that point of GPT-4 level in terms of some of the stats. Now, the additional things such as writing an essay about, I don't even know, a famous historical events, let's say keep it under 300 characters. We can see this typical AI prompting softwares can do all of this stuff. And we can see here we have this. Now, the thing is with BART I do enjoy is it does showcase links and essentially is connected with Google. So stuff like that you can go ahead and do. Now the thing is, let's compare this with GPT-4. Here we have GPT-4 and if you are not aware, they have combined everything into one. So before you had to switch between all the different options, so like DALI 3, etc. So I can say create an image of a dog, go here. This is going to create an image 
and essentially utilizing DALI 3 unless they changed it. But as of recent information, that is what I'm aware of. And basically it creates an AI image similar to like a mid journey stable diffusion version, except you can do it directly in ChatGPT4. And there you go, we see we have this image of a dog. Now this looks very AI like, but you can probably fine tune it. But still that has the upper hand right now on Google Bard. And I'll just go ahead and paste in that prompt we did with uh, the writing the small essay. And look at this, it is writing literally the exact same story. And uh, this one looks a little smaller, but you can see here, moon landing, July 20, 1969. And we can see Neil Armstrong. And now let's go back and compare that with Google Bard. Like 2019-69, Neil Armstrong. And this is literally the exact same story without even showcasing. Only thing is Google Bard seems to have more details saying this is the exact character amounts. And the actual one on GPT-4 looks might be less, give or take. Either way, it seems that Bard right now is a free version. GPT-4 is $20 a month. Seems like it's enough if you're doing basic research, but until we see Gemini Ultra in use, we'll have to wait and see. But do share your thoughts in the comments below and be sure to like and subscribe for more.